Say something to God this morning. See the king.
We lift our hands in the presence of the Lord. Our lives are completed in your presence. Your glory transforms our lives. We are made anew in your glory. Oh Lord, this morning, your name we exalt. Your name we glorify. Because you keep on doing great things when we think we have seen enough of you. You start doing something else. You take us from one level of glory to the other. You take us from one dimension of glory to the other. And this morning, Lord, we just want to worship you and say there is no other God but you. You are seated on the throne high and lifted up. And the robe of your throne covers the whole temple. You keep on doing great things, Lord. Oh, Shamandara Baria Katala Labadia. The glory of the Lord is in this place. Shamanda Kadibadi and the Kaya Havia Katala Rabahasha. Eh, Shabadia Mandaria Katala Labashia Teta. Ah, Shaladia Mandoko Taya Maria Katala Labashia and the Kaya Hasia Tata. Put out of the glory of the Lord are opened over this place. Ah. We bless the Lord. You must learn just to love God. No one can do that for you. We'll get into the word of the Lord shortly. Our God is an amazing God. Amen. 
Let's put our hands together and celebrate God this morning. We can do better than that. Can I hear somebody whistle? Can I hear somebody yuli let? Can I hear somebody celebrate God? First service, I greet and welcome you in the presence of the Lord this very morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, can we welcome all those who are watching us online? We welcome you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the glory of the Lord descend right where you are this very morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and welcome all our ministers, all our pastors in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are honored this morning. We have Pastor Manu Manu all the way from Assemblies of God, Swaziland. Put your hands together for the man of God who is in the house today. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. We also have in the house our very own mother, Pastor Joanna. She's in the house. We celebrate here in Jesus' name. We carry to the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Choir, thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I greet and welcome all of you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate our team? You learn to celebrate others. God will cause others to celebrate you. It's a principle of heaven. Hallelujah. You reap what you sow. We want to get into the word of the Lord shortly today in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to, to teach in the next coming, I don't know how many weeks, Monday, Friday, I want to teach you about something called the heart. Hallelujah. I've been going, I've been going through this for months, something called the heart. But for this morning, I just want to... Um, uh, project my preaching let's take it from the conference i want to project it from the conference and then i'll just introduce a bit of the heart so that tomorrow it becomes easy when we deal with the heart before we pray hallelujah no one doesn't have the heart for you to understand uh we have been dealing about the soul Hallelujah. But today, I just want to introduce the heart for about 10 minutes. I'll talk about the heart. Just ask your neighbor, do you have a heart? Hallelujah. We are talking about the what? The heart. Father, we thank you today. We pray in Jesus' name. Give us understanding according to your word. Reveal mysteries and secrets in our lives. That, Lord, our lives are changed and transformed forever in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many attended the Rapture Speed Conference? How many attended the Rapture Speed Conference? How many, how many were blessed? How many were blessed? How many were blessed? If your neighbor wasn't, is there a problem? But can I, can, I, can I hear those who were blessed in the name of Jesus? Can you show forth that you were blessed in the name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Rapture Speed is not a discussion of mortals. It is not the speed of men. It is the speed of God. Hallelujah. It is not the speed of the natural world. It is the speed of spirits. So when you talk about rapture speed, it means you are supposed to enter or be transported in a certain realm. It's like someone who's talking about the speed of an aeroplane. You can never know the speed of an aeroplane until you are inside. If you have never been in an aeroplane, we can try to explain when I'll be thinking about a train. When I'll be thinking about a bus or the combi that you almost overturned in. That's not the speed of an aeroplane. There is no word in the Bible like rapture. It's not there. Rapture is a word that was created to try to explain something that is unexplainable. This is why Paul uses the word in a blink of an eye. We will be caught up. Hallelujah. When we say 
Something is moving at the speed of rapture. Because the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. That's light. That's why it can also be captured and used as lightning. I always say to people, when you hear the sound, don't go under the bed. The lightning has already missed you. Because if it was hitting you, you will not hear the sound. That's the speed of light. 300,000 kilometers per second. So before you blink, you are gone. And now the speed of rapture. The Bible says we shall all be changed in a twinkling of an eye. So when we talk about rapture, we are talking about the speed that is no measurement. It is no scientific explanation. And therefore, as sons and daughters of this house, it means something should have happened over our lives at this conference. Hallelujah. Let me talk to you. Matter cannot is not able to be raptured. That's why you discover that your body, your physical body is too heavy to be raptured. That's why the Bible says we shall be changed. It needs to be changed. You are too heavy to be carried by that speed. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. I'm not reading it. You can go and read it at home. So everyone who attended the conference must change their position. Change their posture. Change their focus. So that they begin to focus like immortals. Immortals are hungry for glory. And the glory is not actually released, but it is impacted or attracted through association. Moses was with God. The Bible says he was with God for 40 days and 40 nights. When he came back, he had attracted glory. So immortals, they love to spend time with the greater powers. Say so that the glory on them can come also upon them. So those immortals in the realm of darkness, they are not looking for money. They are looking for your glory. That's why they trap your soul. Because in your soul, there is your glory. In your soul, there is your destiny. In your soul, they are your stars. They are not worried. That's why they can tread. They can tread anything for your soul. If you didn't know, it is pathetic for you to lose your soul for 10 million pounds. Because anything that you get at the expense of your soul is your loss. But immortals will do anything to get your soul. What they are chasing is the glory in your soul. What they are chasing is the virtue in your soul. So they have to do anything to get that. So what I'm saying to World Wide International, after this conference, we are not hungry for the things of this world, but you are supposed to hunger for the things of immortals. Ah, Bayaka. Rapture Speed Conference was designed to leave a better, superior spiritual state than what we were before. This is the reason why during the service, we did not, during the, the last service Sunday, the last service Sunday, how many were there at the, at the, at the, at the at ZITF? Hallelujah. We did not see money fall. We did not see cars fall or husbands or wives. Those who remember very well, the glory of the Lord came down. Because that's what crowned rapture speed. It is the glory of the Lord. In other words, what God was saying to us as World Word is that the portals of glory are opened over this house. Each and every one of us must experience Alamaya, the life of Im I don't know what I can say. Must experience the life of immortals. Where you don't need a bus to go to India. Using a plane, you'll be too slow. 
But just like early Maya, just like Philip, the Bible says, as soon as he finished baptizing, hallelujah, the eunuch, the Bible says, he was caught up and he was found at Azotas. This is the speed you are supposed to move at. Our spiritual lives are supposed to be better. If we were praying one hour, now I don't even have to measure your time of praying. This thing that says yesterday, I then had to take five hours in prayer. You are still in the natural. We are supposed to shift to dimensions that says pray without ceasing. And then you can't achieve those dimensions with your natural body. But we need the glory of the Lord upon our lives. Say that wherever we are or we are walking, even if I'm talking to you on a business meeting, but in my spirit I'll be going, Ramandika And the spirit of God is telling you that, hey, you are speaking to a witch here, he's not a businessman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the fall of glory on Sunday. It was a sign that we have been shifted from one dimension to another. We have been changed from, from one world to another. If you are living in a world of failure, you are in a world of unlimited possibilities. If you are living in a world of sickness, you are shifted to another world. That's why the glory came. It didn't come so that we go around saying people, ah, how I feel. It had nothing to do with feelings. It was an announcement that you have been shifted. So can you check with your neighbor, where, what is your new location? Send me a new location. Say to your neighbor, send me a new location. Send me a location. What is your new? You cannot. You cannot have attended the conference from the first day to the last day. And you remain in your old location. Someone's new location is that now, when they are talking, when they are seated at home, they can hear what people are saying in Harare. That's their new location. And they'll call you and say, you are seated in this office and you are talking to so and so and you are saying this and that. You can't remain in the same location after glory has come upon your life. You are supposed to relocate location. Someone's location. Someone's location should be, I know a man. Whether in the body or in the spirit. That one I don't know. Because sometimes, my Andikata, they are two worlds. They are two worlds. Sometimes when, when you operate so much in both worlds, you're no longer sure whether this one, you got it in the world of the natural, but in the, or in the world of their spirit. Because to you, the world of the natural and the world of the spirit, they are so close. This is where Elijah used to survive. To an extent that the king of Syria said, no, what is going on? Who is a sell out here? And then they said, no, 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 man of God. Don't kill us. There is no sell out. There is a man called Elisha. He hears what you say in your bedroom. When he is in Kulumani and you are in Zamba Maramba Fungwa. And then you are planning. That you know what, this is what we're going to do about this man. But this man has located you a new location. And at the location where they stay in, they hear what you are saying. This, don't you know that in the realm of the spirit there is no distance? Oh. Give any best packet if you are close to a person. And if the sister says, Sissy, Iloge Shinoguyole, Kumeli Jin Jemaske. Move to another level, another location. I and Amadea Kata, another location that we no longer discuss about fasting. Because don't you know that even in the realm of darkness, when they want to do something so evil, they have to go on fasting so that they cleanse themselves because they know food pulls people down. Check with your neighbor and say to them, We are fasting tomorrow. I am I. Rapture speed. Rapture speed was supposed to bring spiritual things into our space. Say so that it is no longer an issue that a brother is prophesying. It's no longer an issue that the brother saw an angel. It's no longer an issue that the brother slept in heaven. 
Much when we are in a wrong location, one brother sees an angel, he wants to open a ministry. Because he saw an angel. My and uh, hallelujah. What can we tell him when he saw an angel? You'll be saying, Apostle, I didn't say I saw a man. I said I saw an angel. My little man, hear it from me. Angels are our messengers. So they don't amaze in any way. It's like you coming to announce to people that I had a meeting with my messenger. No one will even look at you or try to hear what you are saying. My God in the heaven, they are messengers. So if you have been born again for more than 24 months and you have never seen an angel, you need prayer. You are supposed to be here on Monday and your prayer request is, I have never seen an angel. Can you check with your neighbor? Can you check with your neighbor? Have you ever seen an angel? Say to you, check with your neighbor, check with your neighbor. Have you ever seen an angel? Okay, the first thing, when were you born again? Check with your neighbor, when were you born again? It is. Listen, Barcelona, listen, listen, listen to me here. Hallelujah. They are, angels are ministering spirits unto the servants of the Lord, or the heads of salvation. But because you are far away from what is happening in the reign of glory, why least I was sleeping yesterday in a dream, the angel appeared. Let's move. Hallelujah. We are stepping into the reign of the spirit. Where our lives will be crowned with immortality. Where we are transformed, our prayer lives changes, our ministry, our intimacy with God, our faith, our ma manner or plan of Bible reading. How do you read the Bible? After the conference, you're supposed to have moved to another level. If you didn't know, your life must be more spiritually inclined as opposite, opposed to physically inclined. If you see yourself are you excited about cars more than revelation? You are sick spiritually. The reality of life is that life is spiritual. As the body of Christ, our greatest problem is that we have taken life to be physical. That's why everything you think about is your physical atmosphere. Life is spiritual. And we are supposed to be serious on this matter that life is spiritual because in the frame of darkness, they are serious about the spirituality of life. Can I give this as an example? Hallelujah. The fact that you have a certificate called a degree cannot make you a wealthy man. It can get you a job. Hallelujah. But it cannot make you wealthy. How many people you know with PhDs that are paid $300? What is needed beyond, behind the certificate is the spiritual advance, is the spiritual support, is the spiritual pushing. We cannot just send our children to school and say they are intelligent without laying hands on them and saying the power of God must come upon you. The favor of God must keep you at work. Life is spiritual. I know you've got beautiful daughters. And as far as you are concerned, it's automatic they'll be married. Can I tell you? Marriage is not cheap. But a marriage certificate is easy. There are people who have marriage certificates, but they don't have a marriage. Because Mayakata. A marriage certificate can bring you a shrinist at home. In the natural, it will be written, and on this day, John married, hallelujah, Anna. But in the reign of the spirit, it will be written, hallelujah, on this day, so and so son married a ritualist. 
So marriage is not a certificate. The design of marriage, marriage is, for ministry, we marry to build altars, generational altars, where the God of the house must appear to our children. So if you are a shrineist and a, a, a something and you come together and have a certificate, it's not marriage, it's called partnership. So for marriage to happen, somebody who is hearing me here, you have to pray. Life is spiritual. You have got to drive uh, certain men of God uh, and drive your daughter who is a woman of God so that they can come together and build an altar where God must appear. Can I ask some people here, how many of you have seen God in your house for me to know that you are married? I'm Hiroshi, right? Kumba. I'm going to call for couples meeting soon. If you have never seen an angel at home, there is no marriage. Because according to the word, for the two shall become one. And God says, I desire a holy offspring. But because we have taken life to be too physical, when you are worried about the nose, you are worried about the additionals, but go, I'm, I'm about to talk about the heart. Check with your neighbor. And say, what is it on? Is it additional or you are a person? Can I shock some people that are here? Most of the people you see walking, they are not persons. These days we have main maids and we have main maids. But never room one of our kungwa. Never catch one of our kungwa. Can I chew on an image is when you are a pinda bangoya? If what you are worried about is physical, they are driving the right car, they are in the right house, they are the right, what do you call this? Height. They are, they, you look at them, they, they, they are what you have never dreamed about. But can I tell you the real, real truth? They are not a person. They are on an assignment. Can I repeat it to all my children here? Worry who wants to be your friend. Be troubled. And don't choose friends by smiles. You are supposed to scan them in the realm of the spirit. But you are not able to scan when, I, when let me leave you alone, let me leave you alone. Let me leave you alone. I want to, I'm serious about some of the things you are praying about, some of the things you are fighting, it's because you are too natural instead of being spiritual. And then you see things from the natural eye. When you see Judas, you think he's the great guy because he's the one carrying the big great church. Oh, Lord, I'm about to pray now. I said the spirit of the Lord in the house. Somebody is supposed to be serious spiritually about your life. So you, you just start business because you think you, you, uh, you have a memorandum of association and a certificate of incorporation and you want to run business. It has not been prayed for. It has not my undercover. It has not been declared the power of God. Let me tell you, they are evil people out there. So the rapture conference came to enlighten us spiritually. Your spiritual senses must be activated. You should change spiritually. And most of you by now should have deleted 10 people. You know them in your phone. Because it is. How did I get here? Let's go. Matthew. Matthew, yes, I'm left in five. With 10 minutes. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to verse 40. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you, you are supposed to take this thing spiritual. So when I think your children are talented, they are going to make it in this life. <laughs> Bruh, Satan was also talented. We need to take things spiritual. When we are coming for prayer, we need to understand it's business. 
We are not just doing a church activity. We are doing something spiritual about our children. That's why you find that some of you, you cannot just give your, your, your child any name that you saw on Facebook or of your former boyfriend. No. You are supposed to be serious about these things because names matter. We are reading Matthew 22, 37 to 40. I want to talk about the heart, where your problem is. Some of you think it's because of your auntie who is a witch. Can I tell you, your auntie has no power, if you're a child of God and you're born again, to do anything over your life if your heart is not corrupted. Yes, I have 10 lessons on the heart. Let's go. 22, 37 of Matthew. Yeah. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all Listen, thy heart. Listen, you love God with what? Uh -uh. You love God with what? Did you, did, did you love God with what? And I will explain what that means. I can start to prophesy here as I'm seeing the realm of the spirit. There are not even five people who love God with their, all their heart in this room. I, I, I can actually close my Bible and we prove it. You love God with all your heart. You remember when I was teaching you about the soul? I said the soul is the engine of your life. But the heart is the ignition key and the steering wheel. That's your heart. Uh, read, read. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, uh -huh. and with all thy soul, uh -huh. and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. No, on these two commandments hang all the law and the what? The prophets. But let's go to the heart. The heart is not what pumps blood. Hey, should I go there? No, I'll, I'll, go there, I'll go there the other week. But what I want to actually tell you, there's something about this thing called the heart. It is not the physical thing that science told us that it pumps and regulates blood and whatever with arteries and veins. And that's not the heart. Because if that was the heart, then the devil will not have it. The devil has a heart. I say who Isaiah. I say who Isaiah. I say who Isaiah. So that you may understand. Isaiah 14, 13. The devil has a heart. But he is a spirit. So a heart is a spiritual thing. I have heard people say, hey, I almost have one person here. When married men are lying to to, 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 to their small houses. They say, she's in my house, but you are in my heart. It's a lie. Read. Isaiah fourteen thirteen, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. Who, who, who's saying in his heart? So, Lucifer has a heart. So, it might not be that thing we learned from science. So, we want to go spiritual this coming week. So, if you miss prayer, you have missed it. You have said in your heart. So, there is something called the heart. Which, when it goes wrong, even God cannot correct it. That thing called the heart. Then Jesus, they asked Jesus, says, what is the greatest law? What is the greatest commandment? He says, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. I'm worried. First service. When the word says all your heart, it means 100% of your heart.
your heart must be in God. That's the only way you can be safe. Remember, I told you when I was teaching about the soul that your soul can be fragmented. You can be here and your soul is not there. It can be fragmented and caught up and snared somewhere. Now, this is how it works. Your soul is driven by the heart. So, if your heart is not 100% in God, everything there, it means that part that is not in God can be snared. That's why you hear somebody, they come here and they say, I love God, I love God with my whole heart, but they fornicate like Satan. Because there is a part in them or in their heart that they did not surrender to God. And that this is what the devil uses because he knows the power of the heart. So when, when let's say you love something more than God. Let's say you are so concerned about your success, that will become your failure. Because the enemy will offer you success without God. We are so concerned about money that you cannot even go to serve God because there's something that you are supposed to, you're supposed to pick money there, pick money that side. That enemy is wise. He knows your heart is not perfect before God. So he uses that to drive you. Many people who have diverted from the ways of the Lord, they did not start in diversion. They started in the right place. But they are the posture of the heart was towards, ah, my, uh, they wanted to be great. Uh, just like Lucifer, they wanted, you know, they see these people who are walking. You know, when they walk into the church, they're like president. And there are people around them and they're saying in their heart, when I grow up, I want to be like apostle. But can I tell you, that thing, that thing shows that your heart is not 100% in God. And that is going to be your fall. The way you are, you are quiet. If your heart is inclined to anything, popularity, you sell your soul for you to be popular. So that's why the first commandment says, thou shalt love. Because it is the enemy can give you anything that is in your heart. But the only thing he can give you is God. So when you want the enemy not to, to, to offer you anything, give your heart 100% to God because he cannot replicate that. But now the temptation is that people love certain things more than God. This is the reason why some of you, you even love your bodies more than God. You love your looks more than God and your danger, your looks will affect you. I have heard people say, ah, I did not come to church because my clothes were not ironed. Who said if you come with iron, an iron clothes, God will not move? We all know Akula Makets. If you love God with all your heart, you just put on whatever is there. You go to save God. Because it's not about clothes. Where now you, are, you even end up counting with uh, this dress I was putting it last week. So this week I cannot put it. My sister, that's where you're going to go. Your heart is not perfect before God. A lot of people, they wonder why they struggle in life because your heart is divided. If it, you know why you pray and your prayers are not answered? Because your heart is not perfect. You are not 100% in God. Your heart is in other things. Sometimes even when people come to church, they're not even coming for God. They hear that at will do it. If the apostle just looks at you, you are healed. I don't know how many people I prayed for. They got healed. I don't know how many people I prayed for. They were barren. They have children, but they are not in the Lord. I always give you this testimony. There's this man I know who has prayed for and his eyes opened. His eyes opened. And from there, a few weeks, he was serious with God. After that, he was after women. He had not seen them. That some of them, they are even like white people. But he did receive a miracle. He received a miracle of, of, of sight being restored. But because his heart was not in God. I wish this was not first service. Now it's first service. I have to end here. We are, we, we, we are going to meet tomorrow. 
your heart. God, you, you know these people who say God looks at the heart. Of course, they are using it in the wrong place. But that's how God measures it. He says they worship me with their lips. But their heart is, is far away. God does not hear such kind of worship. It is not, let me tell you, God does not, it's not that sweet melody that we sing. When we sing, we go, oh, no. God. God hears your heart in the song. He hears your heart. As I'm preaching like this, you are hearing me, but God is hearing my heart in the message. What is your heart in that message? What will move the world is not when we preach sophisticated revelation. It's when we put our heart in what we are doing. Satan only said in his heart. When the heart of a person gets corrupted, they are unhealable. Everything that has happened in your life has been detected from your heart. It is in your heart where you decided to break your covenant with God. So when you, ah, oh, put this japa that I mean because one reason is. The Bible says if a man looked, looks at a woman in, the, in his heart, he imagines he has done it. So I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to mean it. Because in his heart, there was already corruption. I don't know how many corruptible worship we have brought before God because of our divided heart. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Because of our divided heart. Let me tell you, the problem with your husband is not that he's a man. That's why he's cheating. It's the heart. Is the heart. So when you are praying for a woman, you should not have prayed for the one with long nose. You should have concentrated on the heart. When you were trying to explain to God, hey, he has got to be a man. Who is that? Hey, bra. The issue is in the heart. After these 10 lessons, your life will change forever. You see, when you are serving God, it's not, it's, not, it's not for people to see you. It's not for anyone. It's a heart-to-heart -heart thing. I repeat that scripture as I'm closing. Repeat that scripture as I'm closing. Yes, Matthew, a hearty paper. Jesus said unto him, thou hey. shalt love the Lord thy God. With okay, all go, to, heart. go to the one before, verse before, one verse before. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And yes. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Did you hear that? The issue is, if it's all your heart, it means also more your, your soul also comes all, and your mind comes all. So your soul and your mind is controlled by your heart. Trying to fix the soul without fixing the heart is a waste of time. Trying to fix the mind without fixing the heart is a waste of time. Thou shalt save the Lord thy God with all your heart. There are people who go around uh, uh, giving to other people, giving to the poor, not for the heart, not from the heart. But they are doing it because they heard God will bless you. They are doing it so people to see that, you know, at least they are doing something. And that's why they take a selfie. Why do you have to take a selfie that you are helping me? You paid my rent. It was never the heart. Some of you, some of you who love presents, some of the presents you think they are from the heart, they are not from the heart. It's a manipulated system. And the, the advantage with God is that he sees the heart, he reads it. The heart. He's preaching to be popular. 
He's prophesying so that the whole world will call him the first prophet. It has nothing to do with God. Have you ever seen these young people when they pray now? They pray until they project their bodies. Because they know the camera is on me. It, it is the heart, not the body projection. Uh, let's correct some of these things because they're happening everywhere. Ask, go ask that person, is it the heart that projected you the way you were? No, it's the camera. I've seen preachers, there's this one who preaches, I think he's from Kenya. He'll be running. Can you stand up for service? Yes, I'll deal with it. Your heart. You know what? Badikan. Kana mwe wako waka chena. Pamberi pamwari. Pane zime nguwa ude mna madu wete nyanyi. Yete ni awa. Ngoti mwari ndi nukutenda. Nukuti mwono ndi inzwa. Asintu ngoti aura izgu itira ava kutivase. Yo, the, the, most of the struggles, we think it's our neighbor. We think, it's our, no, it's the heart. Do you know why people, they sin today and they are back in, they come and confess here, they cry. They even take off their specs, crying. Let God forgive them. But they are back in it on Tuesday. It's because they left their heart in the sin. They brought the body to church. Hey! Listen to this, listen to this. The Bible says, where the riches of a man are, so will be his. So when you love God with all your heart, it means you also your riches are in God. And so your heart is in God. There are people who leave church because God did not answer their prayer for a girlfriend. Oh, it's the first service. Okay, we are lifting our hands. We are praying. We are meeting tomorrow to dissect on the heart and we pray. And if God can deliver your heart, it is not, it is not an issue for your body. Your body will follow. We, we have people with corrupted heart, but they say they love God. Hey, there's a Shona song. I don't know who can do it. It says, says Lo, lo, twaka, imi moka, moyo, kushiwa, jita, rime, kusi, jita, jita. Father, we thank you today. We come before you with the issue of the heart. Father, we stand here to confess that our hearts have not been perfect before you. Results are everywhere as evidence of the corruptibleness of our heart. As you have said it in your word, for the heart of man is corrupt above all. Who may know it? We are praying today as worldly words. For your word has told us, thou shalt love the Lord your God. With all your heart. And we stand here alone. We know we don't have to be told. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have been half-hearted in this. But today, we are praying in Jesus' name. Heal our heart. Take away the stony heart and give us the heart of the spirit. 
pray today in the name of Jesus for everyone who has read the word that we begin. You say it in your word, keep your heart above all because out of it there are issues of life. We were not wise. We let our hearts go everywhere and we got snared and our soul is in prison. But today we come in the name of Jesus and we receive the healing of our soul. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Put our hands together for Jesus.